Okay, good afternoon. This is Apostle Curtis Lewis coming in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I want to say Shabbat Shalom to uh, everyone that's on social media. And I want to encourage those on Facebook, please take the time to go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel under Apostle Curtis Lewis. I spell Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. We're getting ready to start our class today. And um, before I start, I want to make this announcement uh, this evening, uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, there will be a Hebrew-Israelite Global Day of Repentance. It's going to be many uh, platforms coming together and many hundreds and even uh, possibly thousands of people, Hebrew people, um, coming together praying a day of repentance. The Bible says, if my people, which I call by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven. So we've been in a great awakening for the last several years of African Americans, so-called Negroes waking up, realizing that we are the Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Scriptures. And amen, we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So this afternoon, uh, Teo Ministry is going to be hosting a uh, Hebrew Israelite Global Day of Repentance. And it's going to be hundreds of people on there praying, uh, probably from all over the world, in many cities and many states. I plan on being a part of it as well. And if you're not doing anything, please uh, go to YouTube and you can go to one of these different platforms. There's going to be several platforms coming together. Teo Ministries uh, is going to be hosting it. Sister Ashonda at large, uh, her platform is going to be a, a part of it. Uh, Maria, uh, Trumpet Call, uh, The Gates of Holder. Uh, Stay on Fire Ministry, and several others going to be a part of this global day of prayer for Israel, Hebrew Israelites, the true Israel that's waking up, that's scattered in all the nations of the world. And I'm so excited about this prayer, and uh, I want to encourage everybody to take some time, turn it on, turn your computer on, and just let it play and be a part of this prayer this afternoon. It's going to be 7 p.m., to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, today. So we're asking you to tune in if possible. And, uh, I'm going to definitely join with the brothers and sisters, and we'll be praying for the Father to do a great work with uh, his people, his chosen people. Uh, I believe these next couple of years, Jesus, Terry, are going to be some exciting years. They're going to be some unique years. They're going to be some supernatural things occurring and we definitely want to stay within the protection of the most high yeah. glory to God okay so let's open in prayer and then I'm gonna have my wife to read um, st. Matthew's chapter 7 verse 22 and 23 and then she's gonna read Amos chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 2 and then we're gonna get into our lesson for the day let's pray father we come in the name of Yeshua Jesus, we give you praise and we give you honor. We thank you for this Shabbat class. Thank you for my health and my strength. Thank you for my wife health and her strength. Thank you for our seed in the earth and the protection upon them. I thank you for the house of Israel that's waking up all around the world, scattered in all the nations of the world. We pray, Father God, that you put us back in our rightful place. Heal the uh, people in the house of Israel, even in the prayer this afternoon, Father, and in this prayer right now, I pray that you hear our cry. And Lord, we need your spirit. We need you, your Ruach, Hakadesh. We need the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon us like never before. We thank you for this house. We thank you for, Father, allowing us to come here and teach this class. I pray for those on YouTube pray for those on Facebook and social media. I pray that when this prayer go out and when this teaching go out, that your spirit would touch and heal every ailment in their lives and that you would give them courage, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge and give them strength for these dark days we're living in. We 
give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, we're getting ready to go to our lesson. I'm going to ask my wife to read uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23 first, and then go to uh, Amos. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew 7, 22. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wondrous works? Mm -hmm. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Okay. Amos chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Lord had spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. Okay, so now I want to take a phrase out of Matthew seven twenty three. And I also want to take a phrase out of Amos chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 and put them together so you'll see where I'm going. The phrase I want to use from Matthew 7, 23 is, I never knew you. These are words that the Messiah one day going to say to many people. I never knew you. The phrase that I want to take out of Amos 3, verse 1 and 2 is, O children of Israel, you only have I known. So the subject I'm dealing with today is I never knew you, part two. We did part one last Sabbath class, and I'm going to try to finish it up, uh, the most high willing, this particular uh, uh, class. And again, the subject is going to be I never knew you. And my subtopic is Israel only have I known. Okay, now, <clears throat> in my introduction, excuse me, <clears throat> in my introduction, uh, we're going to go to number one. Uh, I've got three different things under my introduction. Number one, uh, it would be sad, it would be so sad to be reading the Bible most of your life, and when the Bible start manifesting itself, right before your eyes, and then you can't see it. I want to read that one more time because I want this statement that I wrote down to sink in. It would be so sad to be reading the Bible most of your life, and when the Bible start manifesting itself right before your eyes, and then you can't see it. Now, the reason I made that statement is that's exactly what's happening to thousands of people because people for the most part have been reading the Bible all their lives people for the most part say they believe for the last 7 to 10 years probably even before that and a lot of it has speeded up and it ain't going to get no better it's going to keep going because this is the move of the most high it was prophesied by the prophets of old and by the apostles. And it's called so many black people waking up and stating out of their mouth that uh, we are the children of Israel. Can you find uh, Hebrews chapter 45? I think it's verse 4 and verse 5. And read that for me, hon. Uh, let's look at that. That verse just came to me. I think that's. I think it's in Hebrew. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Isaiah. And I think it's uh, 45 verse, uh, start at verse uh, 4, and just read down till I, till I tell you to stop. Isaiah 45 and 4. Mm -hmm. For Jacob, my servant's sake, mm -hmm. and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. Mm -hmm. I girded thee, mm -hmm. though thou hast not known me. Come on. That they may know from the rising of the sun mm -hmm. and from the west that there is none beside me, 
I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is none else. God's got a people in the earth. This book has declared what will happen to those people in the end times, the latter days. And it is happening right before everybody's eyes. And thousands of people are missing the move of God. So I'm going to read that one more time. It would be so sad to be reading the Bible most of your life. And when the Bible starts manifesting itself right before your eyes, and then you can't see it. Some people can't see this awesome revival, this awesome awakening, this awesome move of God where he is bringing the scattered dry bones, connecting them together, waking them up. And they coming forth declaring that we are the children of Israel. Wow. We're the people this book has been talking about. But many people, especially church folks, are missing the move of God right before their eyes. Now, this is the very thing that is happening to so many thousands of people in this Hebrew Israelite awakening. Because they don't understand it. Let me go to Acts chapter 13, verse 40 and verse 41. Misha, can you find that for me? Uh, Acts chapter 13 and uh, look at verse 40 and verse 41. Because I'm going to read this verse of scripture to go along with what I just said. And I'm going to try to get through this lesson again. I'm teaching on, I never knew you. And the subtopic is, Israel only have I known. Why is that in this book? Why did Messiah say, I never knew you? Why is he telling thousands of people uh, when he come, I never knew you? But yet those people was working for him. Those people was working in his name. They did many marvelous things in his, in, in his name. But the Bible said he going to tell them, I never knew you. And so uh, read um, uh, Acts 13, verse 40 and 41, Nisha. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> Be aware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Okay. So it says, Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Go ahead and read the next verse. Behold, ye despises and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, and a work which ye shall. And no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Now here I am declaring this Hebrew Israelite awakening. Yeah. Here I am teaching on it. Here I am. Uh, years before, I didn't used to teach some of the things that I'm teaching now, but now I'm teaching it. And so there are thousands of people watching this, hearing about this. It's all over the social media. It's all over the news media. And a lot of people trying to down it. But here in the book of Acts, verse 13 and 40 and 41, that Nisha just finished reading, it says, be, be, Beware, therefore, lest that come up on you which is spoken of the prophets. So why did I read this? Because I am saying to these thousands of people that have been reading their Bible for many years and uh, have been praying for the move of God, praying for revival in the kingdom, in the church, in the world, but yet, here I am teaching on the move of God, teaching on the, the, the revival, the end time revival. And the Bible said, beware therefore, lest that come up on you, which is spoken of in the prophets. What was spoken of in the prophet? Here it is, verse 41. Behold, you despisers. Beware if you despise what God is doing yeah. just because you don't understand it. Right. Beware if you despise this Hebrew Israelite awakening just because you see some corruption in it. Uh -huh. Beware of you despisers because before you mouth off, before you know that God is really doing something and the Bible is unveiling itself right before your face. It says, behold, you despisers and wonder and perish. Usually it's the people that's perishing that can't see the move of God. Yeah. So it says, and perish, watch this. For I work a work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe. And some people just ain't going to believe it. I don't care how many scriptures you come up with. I don't care how much the scriptures match. Some people are going to stay right in their traditional ways. They're going to stay right in their denominational ways. They're going to stay with their urban apologists. They're going to stay with the oppressor's doctrine. But the Bible says, behold ye despisers and wonders 
and perish by work and work in your days, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. So, here I am teaching the word, and I'm going to go to the word and prove everything. And if you're not careful, the Bible will be unveiling and manifesting right before your eyes in people. And yet, if you're not careful, you will not even believe what the Father is doing. Now, this, these verses right here, uh, when, it was, when Luke penned these verses, uh, it was the Israelites that was watching Yeshua by his spirit working a work in their days. Uh -huh. And they despised it and missed God. But now the table has turned. Now it's the Hebrews waking up and the Gentiles them going to sleep. So the, 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 the switch has flipped itself. And so when you look at these scriptures, it was the Hebrews that was blind at this particular time. But now we're in another time, the close of the age, and it's the Hebrew Israelites waking up, and it's the Gentiles going to sleep. So let me go to number two in my introduction. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, number two. The reason some people do not think that the Hebrew Israelite awakening is of God is because of the smoke screen that's blinding them from seeing the true fire behind all the smoke. So let me read through that again, and I want you to digest what I'm saying. It's quite a few words, but I didn't just put these words together. It's something I'm getting ready to bring out. Number two under my introduction, the reason some people do not think that this Hebrew Israelite awakening is really of God is because of the smoke screen that's blinding them from seeing the true fire uh, behind the smoke. Usually if you see smoke, it's probably a fire somewhere starting that smoke or getting ready to, to blaze up. But a lot of people are looking at the smoke and blinded by the smoke they see and they can't discern that there's a fire behind all this smoke. Glory to God. Now, let me go to Romans. I'm trying to take up where I left off last week, and then I'm going to take off again in part two of I Never Knew You, part two. Subtopic is Israel only have I known. Why is that in the scripture? It's in there because that's exactly what's going to happen because it's written. Now, Romans, to all those people that may not believe in this Hebrew Israelite awakening, and all these black people now declare that we are, some of them saying we're the true Jew. The true Jew was originally uh, Hebrew Israelites, which was people of color, black people, so-called black people. These was the original people. We're not saying that others can't be, engraft, can't be grafted in. We're not saying others can't be saved. No, we're not saying that. We are saying history, scripture, documents, now has come out to prove that the original people were people of color. But we've been led to believe there was European. We got the movie, The Ten Commandments. We got uh, the Renaissance period. had paint everybody white in the Bible, and it's just not the truth. And now we have found out the true people of the Bible, and now they're waking up. They're coming out confessing, but people are looking at this, looking at their Bible, and don't even believe it. Glory to God. So here's what the scripture has to say to all of those who despise what is happening. And again, some people are despising it because of the corruption they see. Some people are despising it because they're blinded by the smoke. They're blinded by the, uh, some of the, the corruption that's around this movement. But don't be so distracted by the things that's distracting you and, and, and miss the move of God. Because God is moving and he's going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. So these scriptures here are for those people who are despising this movement. And it's also for people who are despising the Hebrew Israelites. Because I agree there's a lot of Hebrew Israelites that's still doing some things that's not right. Amen. A lot of them are speaking some things that are, they shouldn't be speaking. They, 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 they. They, a lot of them are involved in things they shouldn't be involved in, but that do not void them from being God's chosen people. 
And God's got a plan for those people. As they wake up, they, they, they're waking up and they've been torn, they've been tossed, they've been broken, they've been oppressed, they've been hated. But So they're waking up with all kinds of chains on them. But God's got a plan for them. So let me go through these scriptures. Romans 11. I'm going to let you read that for me. Huh? Romans 11, start at verse 25. And go down to verse 27. And then, uh, Christy, I'm going to let you get, when you get a chance, Ezekiel 36. And you can start at verse 22. And I'm going to let you go down to verse 25. And I may stop you as you go. So let, let me give you your scriptures again. I'm going to let my wife get Romans 11, verse 25, down to verse 27. And Christy, you find Ezekiel 36, verse 22, down to verse 25. And it sounds like uh, my tea is brewing over there. Thank you, Nisha, because I'm going to need it so I can clear my throat. <laughs> okay. All right, huh? go ahead and read uh, Romans 11, verse 25, down to verse 27. Why am I going through these scriptures? Because... I want to show you that God is not caught by surprise with these Hebrew Israelites waking up. Some of them on the street cussing folks out, okay? Do you think God didn't see that? God saw it before it ever happened. And all of that is in his overall plan. Now, I am not saying that God is endorsing that. I am not saying that I'm endorsing that. But what I'm saying is, the Most High got a plan for his people that have been broken all of these years. And they're coming back, realizing who they are, trying to take their place. And many of them are turning people off. But it's in the scripture that this is God's business. God's people is his business. Yeah. And so those that don't, don't understand what God is doing in this Hebrew Israelite awakening, you might want to be quiet and pray. Because the Bible said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And we're talking about the people that lived in Jerusalem that were scattered throughout the whole earth. And now they're waking up. Pray for them. Uh, uh, the Bible said, they shall prosper that love thee. The Bible said, I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. If these are God's true chosen people and you are putting your mouth on them, you're putting your mouth on yourself. You're hurting yourself. So therefore, I'm going to go through these scriptures. And again, I am not endorsing wrong living. I am not endorsing getting on the street, cussing folks out. I'm not endorsing that. But this stuff did not take the father by surprise. Okay, go ahead and read your verse. Romans 11:25. 25. Uh-huh. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Okay, I kind of left off here last week, and I'm, I'm taking it back up again so I can go on into part two. Now, the Bible is clearly saying, brethren, those of you that claim you're Christian, that claim you're born again, that claim you love God, first of all, you can't love God if you hate God's people. It's just they don't go together. So if you really love God, you'll love his people. He said right here to those of you that believe the Bible, uh, those of you that believe God, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant of this mystery. This was a mystery that God is now unveiling in this awakening. Go ahead. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, mm -hmm. lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, mm -hmm. that blindness in part has happened to Israel. Okay, blindness in part has happened to Israel. These people that's waking up, many of them, didn't even know there was Israel. It was a mystery. They was blinded. They lost their heritage. They lost their land. They went into slavery or slave ships. And now there's a move of God. All of a sudden, they're waking up and taking their positions as the chosen Hebrew Israelite descendants of the Bible. Now, you may believe in somebody else. If that's what you believe, support them. But what if you're wrong? If you're wrong, you're in trouble. Because if you put your mouth on God's people, just because you made a mistake, don't take the curse off your life. And there's a way to find out. If oh, there's a way to find out. We done did lessons on it, too. It's easy. You can easily find out who the people are. And yes, Deuteronomy 28 describes them to the T. Uh, Leviticus 26 describe them to the T. 
Uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 11, uh, 12, 13, and 14 describe who Israel is to the T. So if you want to be ignorant, you just be ignorant. But the truth of the matter is the Bible tells you who Israel is. And I will say this, for hundreds of years, or for many years, the, who the church thought was Israel and thought was the true original Jews is not the true people. That's a fact. Now, a lot of people don't like hearing that. But you done sent billions of dollars to the wrong people. You done supported the wrong people. Now, the true peoples are waking up. Now, you need to be diligent enough to go talk to the Father so he can open your eyes like he opened in our eyes. And then you won't have to be in doubt. Glory to God. Keep reading. That blindness in part has happened to Israel mm -hmm. until the fullness of the Gentiles become empty. He blinded them to the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Come on. And so all Israel shall be saved. Now here is, here is where I want to go. And this is why I'm saying people should keep their mouth off Israel. And like I said, if you don't believe that this Hebrew awakening, these Negroes waking up realizing they are Israelites, you don't believe it, that's your business. But if you're wrong, you're in trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. But they are the people. But now here's what the Bible said. Read that phrase one more time. And so all Israel shall be saved. All of them going to be saved. This is, this is a covenant that the Most High God has made with his chosen people. Now, I don't want to go into details of what that means by all shall be saved. We'll do that on another lesson. But the scripture, read it one more time. And so all Israel shall be saved. If all Israel going to be saved, that means that mean all of them ain't saved right now. But if all of them going to be saved, why are you talking about people that going to be saved in their unsaved state right now? So you can you got the cart before the horse. You you you. It's like if if you looked at Paul and judged him for who he was at the time when he was Saul, you would have missed the move of God. Because when later on God saved Paul and he became one of the greatest apostles that of, of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So it's like you're talking about Saul not knowing that he's going to eventually be Paul. Okay. Same thing with the Israelite movement. Same thing with the Black Hebrew Israelites. People say Black Hebrew Israelites, but yeah, they are black, but they Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. It is a Hebrew Israelite awakening. And if you are down in them, what you're doing is you're talking about a people that God said he's going to save. Huh? He got his hand on them. He got his hand on these people. Now, it may not look so good on some cases and some fronts, but it, it's not for you to put your mouth on them. Why? Because all Israel shall be saved. Come on. And so all Israel shall be saved mm -hmm. as it is written. As it is written. It's written. Come on. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now we talked about this last Sabbath. I don't know if anybody remember, but it says, now he just said all Israel shall be saved. All right. Now he's telling you how they're going to be saved. How they're going to be saved. And when they're going to be saved. Come on. There shall come out of out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now keep in mind that Apostle Paul is writing this uh, letter, letter to the Romans. Now at this particular time, Christ the Messiah has already come, right? Mm -hmm. He has already lived his life, died, resurrected, and he's on the right hand of the Father, right? Mm -hmm. This is Paul writing this letter after the fact. He said He's coming back and going to save all Israel. Is that not what it said? That's what it said? So he said he's coming back. Listen to me closer now. He's coming back and all Israel shall be saved. Then he tell you how they're going to be saved and when they're going to be saved. Read that one more time for me. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away all ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. This is a special covenant that the Most High God got with Israel. So Israel may be cutting up now. I don't, I don't like the fact that Israel is cutting up. I don't like the fact that some of the camps go out there and act the way they act. But they are God's people. And it's not your business. The Father had to show me that. It's not your business. Pray for them. No, I don't, I don't agree with some of the things I see. 
But just because I don't agree, don't make me get ahead of the scripture. Why? Because the scripture has been revealed to me that he going to save all Israel. So if he is going to save all Israel, it's not for me to sit here before he saved Israel and talk about Israel. Can y'all see that? Okay, because he said a deliverer going to come out of Zion. What is that? What is that? That's the coming of Jesus Christ. That's the coming of the Messiah. Is it? It is not. Huh? Go ahead, start over with that again. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer. Out of Zion, which is glory, he's at the right hand of the Father. Come on. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now listen to this. It is the Father's job to turn the ungodliness from Jacob. He didn't say the churches. He didn't say turn it away from the Catholic Church. This ain't your covenant. Your covenant is when they blinded, he let y'all get a chance to come in. This is your time now to get in the ship. But the Bible said there's a special covenant for Israel. And this is what the Eurocentric church never taught. Did y'all hear any of this teaching in the Eurocentric church? No. I didn't hear it, but the Father had to reveal this to us. And they told us, no, you got to get it now. I agree you need to get it now. I agree you need to get it right now. But there is a special covenant with Israel. And the covenant is he going to come out of Zion. He going to turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is his covenant to Israel. He didn't say that was everybody else's covenant. He said this is for Israel. And what he going to do? Turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob is the Jacob. He's talking about the descendants of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel that scattered everywhere, waking up, realizing who they are. The father is not caught off guard. I believe that's him being specific. He's spe it's very specific. Y'all see that? He's very, being, huh? He's being specific and saying, I'm talking about Jacob. I'm talking about Jacob. So he ain't talking about some converse here. I don't have a problem with converts. I don't have a problem with people being grafted in, receiving Messiah. We talking about Jacob. We talking about a bloodline. Amen. Everybody, everybody see that? So that's what he's talking about. And the covenant is, I'm coming to turn ungodliness from them. So if you let the ungodliness you see right now cause you to down these people, you're getting yourself in trouble because he said, don't boast against them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Keep reading. <clears throat> For this is my covenant unto them. It's a covenant unto them. It ain't, everybody else ain't got this covenant. I'm sorry. Yeah, they special in that God said, I'm going to do this for them. Come on. When I shall take away their sins. Mm -hmm. He going to take away their sins. Come on. As according to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Mm -hmm. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Okay, they beloved. So, so everybody that's looking at this Hebrew Israelite awakening, and you letting some of the corruption in it that you see discourage you, when well, you're getting discouraged too fast, because the Father said, "I got this." He said it right here in the scripture. Go ahead and finish that scripture you read. I'll start over. Um, as for concerning that one, mm -hmm. as for concerning the gospel, they mm -hmm. are enemies for your sake. Okay. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Because they are the, the elect. They are the chosen. They are the people that was chosen before the foundations of the world. And even though they messed up, and went into captivity for all these years, the scripture said he's going to wake them up. And when they wake up, the grave clothes that's on them, he promised, I'm coming back and take it off of them. Yeah, yeah. Keep on. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That verse is saying this calling, this, cho this choice that I made to make Israel my elect won't change. It's without repentance. I'm not going to repent. Okay, you finish or you got another one? That's 29. What's the next one say? For ye, for as ye in times past have not believed God. Mm -hmm. See, somebody don't believe God. Maybe that's why I need, I need to read that. Come on. For as ye in time past have not believed God, mm -hmm. yet 
have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, because of their blindness, because of their fall, everybody else obtained mercy. So the father is saying, if I had mercy on you due to their fall, why you can't have mercy on them when they coming back from the fall? All right, so Christy and I, this is where we left off last time because I wanted Christy to read this. But now Christy, Ezekiel 36, verse 22 down to verse 23. What Now, now in Ezekiel, what am I going to do? I'm going to build on the scriptures that my wife just got through reading in Romans 11, 25 through 27 because when Paul wrote this letter, he got this from the scriptures. Paul said what he said about this covenant because Paul knew what the prophets had said about Israel. Okay? So, Christy, read uh, Ezekiel 36, start at verse 22, go down to verse 25. Now, let's look at what is stated by the prophet about Israel. This ain't, this not, these, these are not converts. These are not so-called Christians at this time. This is Israel. Come on. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel. Say unto who? The house of Israel. So we can't make no mistake about that. Amen. All you scholars or you preachers that listen to me, this is Israel. God's got a plan for Israel. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sake. Okay, so he's telling them right here, I'm going to do something, but I'm not doing it for your sake. Go ahead. O house of Israel. House of Israel. But for my holy name's sake. I'm going to do what I'm going to do for Israel for my name's sake. Come on. Which he have profaned among the heathen. Who profaned his name among the heathen? The Israelites. Now, can't we look at this Hebrew Israelite awakening and realize some of them still profaning his name? Yeah. Some of them still embarrassing him? Because, I, you know, I listen to them all the time. I, I, these brothers, I love my brothers in the camp. They are our people. Okay? I am not down in them. Amen? Because the Father told me, pray for them. They returning back to the Most High best they know how. I'm not happy with some of the things I see, but I'm happy to know what the Scripture said he going to do for them. And I got hope that the Father got it under control. Amen. So I thank God for Bishop Nathaniel of IUIC because I understand it better. I thank God for the Gorilla Hebrew. I don't know if y'all ever watched him or Deacon Construction. I don't know if y'all ever watched him. Now, I don't agree with all the doctrine that I've heard and I don't agree with the profanity. But one thing I do agree with, they are God's people. God's got his hand on them and what they are doing is still uh calculated in, uh, in this move of God, whether people know it or not. And like I said last week, one of the reasons why all of this calculated in the move of God is because this very nation, along with other nations of the world, hated these people, uh, still hate these people, have used these people, have gotten rich off these people, Cussed them out, fed them to beasts and alligators, uh, called them all kinds of names, and now some of them waking up, calling them the same name they was called. So what is America getting? What is the nations getting? They getting a judgment from the from the very people they judged, because the Bible said, "Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you gonna reap." So yeah, some of these people waking up. Talking bad about you Gentiles. Why? Because y'all done did some bad stuff to them. Amen. Amen. Now, God still got a plan. He may let this go on a little season. But the Bible said God not caught off God because he sent in the deliverer from Zion to take care of this problem. But before he take care of the problem, he just going to kind of give you some of your medicine back. According to his law. I'm not preaching this is all right. I have to keep saying that because I don't want to come over like that. Right. But I understand what's going on, Tammy. Right. Right. He's giving you a taste of your own medicine, nations of the world. Right. He's giving you a taste of your own medicine, America. All right. And judgment is being spoken from the mouth of the people you judge. Mm -hmm. 
I can go through the scripture and show you that. But I ain't got time right now. Come on, Christian. Which ye have profaned among the Now let me add, we ain't gonna go do that. I'm not gonna go cuss nobody out. I'm gonna represent Jesus with my life, my words, my actions, and in and, and, and the ministry and everywhere I go. But everybody ain't there. Wow. Come on. Whether ye went. Mm -hmm. And I was and start over again with that Christian. Okay. Over. Yeah. Okay. Therefore, say unto the house of East, the house of Israel. So we know we're talking about the seed. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God. Mm -hmm. I do not this for your name's sake. For for your oh. Uh, I do not this for your sake. For your sake, right. O house of Israel. Mm -hmm. But for my holy name's sake. Mm -hmm. Which ye have profaned among the heathens. So we know the Israelite profaned his name. Come on, among the heathens. They're, they're doing it now. Come on. Whether ye went. Mm -hmm. And I will sanctify my great name, mm -hmm. which was profaned among the heathens. Okay. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. When the Father get through with this Hebrew awakening, all you heathens, if you're not a heathen, don't put the shoe on. If the shoe fit, wear it. If it don't fit, don't wear it. I ain't talking about you. But all you heathens that's down in this Hebrew Israelite movement, calling it a hate group, you hating on yourself. Wow. Read that again. And I will sanctify my great name. He said, I'm going to sanctify my great name. Which ye have profaned among the heathens. The Israelites did profane his name among the heathens. Come on. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And the heathens shall know. But when I get through, you heathens are going to know these are my people. The very people that profane my name. Profanity coming out their mouth. These very people that y'all don't understand, I'm going to sanctify my great name with them. My Lord. Why? Because I'm going to send a deliverer from Zion to turn around godliness from Jacob. Hallelujah. This is my covenant to them. <laughs> I ain't got nothing but the Bible. <laughs> Come on, keep reading. Says the Lord God, when I shall sanctify, sanctify in you. Let me start over. Yeah, start over. And I will sanctify their great name. Mm -hmm. I, and I will sanctify my great name, mm -hmm. which was profaned among the heathen. Okay. Which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. Said, I am the Lord, said the Lord God. Okay. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. The wow. same people that y'all calling a hate group. Jonathan, uh, what is his name? Jonathan Black, uh, Black Street? Rosenblatt? Rosen, whatever his name. A-D-A-O? <laughs> so, are y'all calling him a hate group? But the, but the father say, when I finish, you gonna know who the hate group is. Because I'm gonna be glorified in these same people y'all lying on y'all hate. I'm gonna be glorified in these same people that's embarrassing my name. Why? Because this is my covenant to them. We, our people may have broke the covenant, but Father don't break covenant. Okay, right, right, right. Keep reading. For I will take you from among the heathen mm -hmm. and gather you out of all countries. See, he going to take us from among the heathens. What people on the planet, all over the world and every nation right now, that got there through slave uh, ancestors? Ain't but one people. But the Bible say, According to the prophets, he going to take them from all, from among the people. And at this time, he going to plead with them in the wilderness, and he going to clean a bunch of them up. And it's a fact that some of them going to lose out, because we'll still think people. And the Bible said he going to get the rebels from among us, but a bunch of them going to be cleaned up, Tammy, mm -hmm. according to the Bible. Amen. Am I preaching the Bible or am I making it up? Preaching the word. Come on, keep teaching then. Keep, keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> and will bring you into your own land. I'm going to bring you into your own land. Israel is not in her own land yet. The 12 tribes are still scattered in the nations. Glory to God. And the Bible said when he bring them back, he bringing them back all together. He ain't bringing no two tribes and they're looking for the 10 lost tribes. That's a man-made joke. Keep reading. Then will I sprinkle clean water 
He gonna sprinkle clean water upon them when? When he take them out of the nations. Don't that sound just like what Paul was talking about? He gonna send a deliverer from Zion, turn away a godliness from Jacob. So some of our people got hope, even though it don't look like it right now, Christian. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Come on. And ye shall be clean. Ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness. Uh-huh. And from all your idols. Mm -hmm. Will I cleanse you? Will I cleanse you? He's gonna do what? Clean them. He said he's going to clean them. So now go back and read Romans again. So make sure the scriptures are matching. Scholars, urban apologists, uh, and this is for Israel. This is not for what y'all call the church in the New Testament, even though Israel is the true church. But this is a covenant for Israel. So if you can't deal with how ugly Israel look right now, you're not going to be able to deal with them in the future because Father said, I'm going to bring them out the nation. I'm going to clean them up, not for their sake, but my name's sake. Let's read that again. See, can we see that's what Paul is saying in Romans 11, uh, 25 through 27. Let's see if this match. Are it Curtis Lewis? Is Apostle Lewis making this up? Because this don't sound like Christian, so-called Christian doctrine, does it? Don't sound like normal doctrine. It don't sound like stuff we done heard, no. but it sure sound like word for word what is written. Okay. Read it again. Bible. Huh? It's Bible. <laughs> Come on, read it again. Romans eleven twenty five. 25. Mm -hmm. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. This is a whole mystery. Come on. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, mm -hmm. that blindness in part has happened to Israel mm -hmm. until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. All these black people waking up, realizing we Hebrew Israelites, you know what that means? Mm -mm. The Gentiles done went to sleep. If we woke, somebody done went to sleep. Because we were supposed to stay blind and sleep until they come in. Now, if we coming in, realizing who we are, they sleep. Come on, keep reading. I just thought I'd throw that in for free. And so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. And it's telling you when he going to deal with them, when he take them out of the nations. I, I want mine right now. Come on. I want to be clean right now. I don't want to wait till he come. I want to be clean when he get here. That's my hope. And we ought to have more Hebrews like that. Father, clean me right now. But just because all of them ain't clean right now, the scriptures say when he take them out of the nations, he still got a plan for them. Right there in the book. Read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved, mm -hmm. as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Mm -hmm. For this is my covenant unto them. This is my covenant to them. This ain't for y'all. Mm -hmm. So those of you that don't believe in this Hebrew awakening, don't believe in these black people claiming they're Israelites, this ain't for you. Unless you believe. Let's keep going. I just want to show you Romans 11 and Ezekiel 36. Talk about the same thing. Can y'all see that? Amen. So let's go somewhere else. Let's go to uh, Romans 11 verse 18. And I'm going to read this. I'm going to read the first part of Romans 11 18. And I'm going to read the first part of it, Romans I'm sorry, Romans 11, 18. Did I say Romans 18? I didn't? Oh, okay. I thought I heard myself say it wrong. Uh, Romans 11, verse 18. And I'm going to read part of Romans 11, verse 22. I am still talking to them. Let me read this statement again. The subject is, I never knew you. Part two. The subtopic is, Israel only have I known. This is why he don't know all of you all. This is why he don't know these other denominations and these wow. other churches, because he ain't never started them. He ain't never offered but one thing, Israel. And we're going to go through some scriptures that's going to further validate that. So when Yeshua in Matthew 7, 23 said, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Who is he talking to? All the stuff that come on the religion. All the stuff that come on the denomination, the Catholic Church, the Protestant churches, 
the Baptist churches, the Methodist churches. Don't get mad if I'm calling your denomination name. It's just the truth. If you don't want to be in that bunch that he's going to tell them, I don't know you, please get it right before that day. Amen. So who is he saying, I never knew you? Everybody that ain't included in Israel, his All house. Right. That's who he's saying. Now, everybody else can come in his house if you come in right. right. But Israel only, he knows. That's what the book is saying. That's the house you got to come in. That's the house you got to be in if you want to be saved. Okay, so let me read this again. Hallelujah. All right. The reason some people do not think that the Hebrew Israelite awakening is of God is because of some of the smoke screen that's blinding them from seeing the true fire behind the smoke. Why did I say that? Some of y'all looking at the corruption and you can't see that God is not caught by surprise because he got a covenant with these very people that's cutting up and he said, I'm going to take care of their ailments. I'm going to turn ungodliness from Jacob. I'm going to take them out of the countries and I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to take them through the wilderness and marry them again and I'm taking them back into their land. Yeah. But some of y'all can't see the scriptures and you're talking too fast. Uh -huh. And you're running your mouth and you're getting yourself in trouble because you're harming God's chosen people, the apple of his eye. So, Romans 11 verse 17, watch this. Boast not against the branches. He said, keep your mouth shut. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what your emotions telling you. Your emotion making you feel something that God ain't even in and don't even like. So don't boast. Keep your mouth shut. Now look at Romans 11 verse 22. Watch, he, watch what he said. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise you're going to be cut off. Here's what he said. When I cut these people off, when I let them go into persecution for over 400 plus years, when I sent them on slave ships everywhere, when I let the world hate them and call them by names, and now that I'm waking them up, bringing them back to me, he said, when they went down, I had mercy on you. And now that they coming back, why you can't have mercy on them? And if you don't continue in his mercy that he had on you when they fail, you're going to be cut off. That's what that book said. Now, y'all go in your, own, your spare devotion time and read it and check me out and see if that's not what it said. He's telling these Gentiles, these heathens, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you will be cut off. If he was good to you when they fail, you're going to have to be good to him and good to his people now if you want to continue with him. Okay. Because if you don't, he promised, I'm cutting you off. That's what the book is saying. And so why is this message is important? Because Father trying to say, y'all need to shut up. I'm at work. I'm doing a work in your day that even though it's declared under you, some of y'all still don't want to believe it because you believe what your eyes see. You believe what your emotions are telling you more than what is written in the book. Okay, let's go a little further. All right. Now, I want to go through some scriptures that prove Israel only have I known. And why he said, I never knew you. He is simply saying, I don't know no one but my house, my people. And anybody that's going to become my people got to come through Yeshua the door and get in his house. What is his house? Israel. And nobody else he know. If you're not in the house of Israel on the day of judgment, you out of the house. You, you going to the lake of fire. Israel only have I known. I never knew you. So I'm going to go through enough scriptures to validate all this. Okay? Now, uh, Tammy, read uh, John 10, verse 1. Judy, get uh, St. John chapter 10, verse 16. But start with uh, St. John chapter 10, verse 1. Sister, Sister Tammy. I encourage some of you preachers to please hear what the word is saying. And uh, I'm not saying 
run away from your Baptist church or your people at the Baptist church or the Methodist church person. But you ought to stay there and tell them the truth. But your organization, no matter what its name is, is not of God. He don't know your organization because he never started one. Men started those things. Not God. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that entereth not by the door. Anybody trying to get in but don't come through the door. Come on. Into the sheepfold. A sheepfold? You mean there's a sheepfold? Well, I'm going to read these scriptures and I'm going to show you who the sheepfold is. And so when Yeshua said, I never knew you, he's simply saying, I don't know nobody that ain't in my sheepfold. That's all he said. So we done read that for years, I never knew you. And I, we done heard all kinds of interpretations of, of that, right? Mm -hmm. But here's what he said. If you ain't in my sheepfold, I don't know you. Okay. <laughs> so everybody listening to me, all the ministers that once knew me, and uh, I, when I was in your circle, I loved you. But listen, you better go. We're well, not better. I don't want to threaten you. But you ought to go back and reinvestigate some of the things you think you know. Because if you and your people ain't in this sheepfold, he going to tell you, I never knew you. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, mm -hmm. but climbeth up some other way, uh -huh. the same is a thief and a robber. If you try to come through the Catholic church way, or the Protestant churches, or any other church, or any other leader, you, you, what did it say? You a thief, you a thief and, a and a robber. You, it's only one way to get in this sheepfold. It is through Messiah, Jesus Christ. But you can't get in if you hate his sheep. Mm. Why would any parent let a stranger come in your house to stay and they and that stranger you know hate your children? Okay. And treat them wrong. And, uh, and you know this person got a history of hating your children and gonna treat them wrong. Why would any parent with common sense let that stranger come into their house and live? Well, God's the same way. So you can't say, well, I believe in Jesus. Oh, really? That's good. But if you don't believe in Jesus' flock and people, you ain't getting in his house. Because Jesus just like his people. He just like his, he looked like his people. So if you don't like Jesus' people's complexion, you sure ain't going to like him either. Because the Bible said in Hebrews, it behooved him to be made just like his brethren's in all things. He got their color. He looked like them. He talked like them. He just without sin. You ain't gonna like, gonna like it because he looked like his people. Hallelujah. Okay, so Judy, read John ten verse sixteen, and then I'm gonna try to speed it up a little bit. Okay, John ten verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. And other shit help. I have, uh -huh. which are not of this fold. See, we not see when we preach Israel, Israel, Israel. The reason we preaching an Israel gospel because all the end time prophecy deals with Israel. Mm -hmm. Revelations deal with Israel. Yeah. The kingdom is an Israel, uh, not an Israeli kingdom. That's man made in the Middle East, Israeli people. Israel, the bloodline Israelites. The kingdom is set up around the 12 tribes of Israel. The kingdom is set up around the 12 apostles of Israel. Glory to God. It's an Israelite kingdom. So when we preach in the Bible from the perspective of Israel, we're not out of order because he ain't make the covenant with nobody but Israel. Right. You go to, <laughs> excuse me, Jeremiah 31 started verse 31. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8 started verse 8. You go to Hebrews chapter 10, start at verse 15, and you see there is no one in the Bible he made the covenant with, but the southern tribe and the northern tribe, which was Judah and it's Ephraim, which is the other 10 tribes. Sometimes it said Judah and Israel. And when you see Judah and Israel, he's just talking about the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. That's what he's talking about. You don't see nowhere else in the Holy Scriptures where God made a covenant with any denomination. Mm -hmm. so, then, so when we hear Jesus say, I never knew you, 
I am laboring so you can know what he's talking about. I don't know nobody but the one in my sheepfold. That's what he said. Okay, you go ahead. Who's reading? Go ahead. Then other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Mm -hmm. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So here's what I was about to say. You know, some people say, "Why do you talk about Israel so much?" The Bible talks about Israel mm -hmm. over 2,500 times. All through the scriptures talks about Israel, but we're not teaching it because we're leaving everybody else out. Because Messiah said right here, <clears throat> excuse me, he's making it clear, I have other sheep, I have a sheepfold, but I have other sheep. Now, who are the other sheep? Anybody want to take a guess? Huh? Gentiles? Or it could be some Hamites out there that have never been, because Hamites always was close with Israelites. Hamites and Israelites always interacted in marriage. But it ain't but three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, so you got Japheth is the uh, the uh, line where the Europeans come from. Uh, Ham is the Hamites, okay? And then you have Shem, that's where the Israelites came from. So he said, I have a sheepfold. My sheepfold is Shem, the Israelites, so to speak. The Jacob, that's my sheepfold. Everybody else that want to be saved, you're going to come in my sheepfold. You're going to come in my family. You can't set your family up in Japheth and think I don't know you. He, you're going to hear him say, I don't know you. Israel only have I known. So those that are not saved, if you're going to be saved, Yes, you have to accept the Messiah, but Messiah put you in his sheepfold. And you don't come in his sheepfold with your credentials and your name. Because those are the only people he knows. Because when you get in his sheepfold, you got to go by his rules, the rules and regulations in his house. So he said, other sheep I have. So, he, so he's not leaving anybody out. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. Sure. So when we say Israel, 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 yeah, it is Israel. It's an Israel kingdom that he's going to set up. Yeah. But everybody else who want to be in that kingdom got to accept Israel. Mm -hmm. You got to love Israel. You can't love the Israel Messiah and hate the Israel people. Right. It's just going to work that way. Okay. So he said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, it's his fold. And he already had it when he came over in the New Testament and said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. His, his church was the fold of Israel. Glory to God. That he brought to the mountain. So he says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be two folds. One, one fold, one shepherd. And so, if you're not in that one fold, under that one shepherd, he gonna tell you, I never knew you. Israel only have I known. My fold only have I known. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So let me go, let me speed it up a little bit. Go to Ephesians 4 verse 4. Let me do some read now, so I can speed it up. I want to close it out. Ephesians 4, start at verse 4. What's the first word in y'all Bible? Your Bible. I'll give you a little more time. I want to see if y'all got it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. When you get there, tell me the first word you see. There. 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 Okay. Israel only have I known. Ephesians 4, verse 4. There is one body. I just got through talking about that. He, he only got one fold. Okay? And it's Israel. So he said, there is one body. One spirit, even as you are calling one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. So if you are not a part of the Israel kingdom or the Israel 
of God, the true Israel of God, when you get saved, you are placed in that one body, a body of Israelites. Now, if that's hard for somebody, why do y'all preach Acts chapter 2 about the day of Pentecost? Because all of them was Israelites. All of them, there was Israelite people. They, they had a, a one Canaanite apostle. His name was Simon. If you look at, uh, I think it's Matthew chapter 10, when he named all his apostles, he named one of them Simon the Canaanite. But my point is, it was an Israelite movement on Pentecost. So everybody that claiming they're part of the church, what church? The Israel of God, the Israelites that started that movement on Pentecost. So he ain't got but one body, uh, one faith, one baptism, one God, above all, uh, in all, and through you all. Now let's look at Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. He ain't got the one. So where am I going with all of this? When he say, I never knew you, he's talking to everybody that's in other folds. He's talking to everybody outside of his sheepfold. He said, I never knew you. Because you, 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 and see, he know Israel because he know what he gave Israel. And so those that's coming into the house of Israel he can say, you're safe now because you're in a people that he know that he revealed himself to. Okay? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are we all, that's Jew or Gentile, that's Israelites or those that are non-Israelites. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, that's his sheepfold. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, all of us become one family in this sheepfold, in his sheepfold. But when you come in his sheepfold, you have to identify with what the sheepfold is called. You can't come in and change his name. Okay? Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. And so all these scriptures talk about the same thing I'm up here teaching. Hallelujah. Let me see how much more I got. Oh, I'm just about there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. When y'all get it, what's the first word? Oh, I just read that? Okay, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. What's the first word? In Wherefore. Wherefore, okay. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Watch this. Wherefore, remember... That you being Gentiles, that you've been in time past Gentiles in the flesh. So you know he's talking to the Gentiles now, the uh uh I believe this more than uh, likely the Isles of the Gentiles, which is the descendants of Japheth. Okay, but sometimes it means other nations as well. But I believe here he's talking about the Isles of the Gentiles. So it says, For there is one spirit. Spirit, and I'm sorry, I'm going back to that verse again, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past in the flesh, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made with hand. Okay. That at that time, when they was uncircumcised, that at that time, and when they was Gentiles uh, in the past, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of the Baptist church. Israel. Israel. So if people don't like this Israel teaching, you really don't. You ought to just shut the Bible. Get you another Bible. Because this one talks about Israel. Okay. Why? Because that's his sheepfold. Mm -hmm. So it says, uh, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel... And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, who is an Israelite, Christ is an Israelite. So you got to take his name if you want to be in his family. You got to love his name. He's an Israelite. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime was far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 
For he is our peace. Now this verse right here, I heard um, I heard somebody teach on this, and I, I said, let me go look at that. And I said, you know what? They right. This verse right here, shout out to Maria, uh, trumpet uh, call, because she brought this out. And I, had, I went and looked at it, and I said, this is absolutely right. For Paul is talking to the Gentiles, but in verse 14, he said, for he is our peace. What is Paul talking about there? Huh? He's talking to the Gentiles. He said, y'all used to be strangers from the covenant of promise. But all of a sudden, look at what Paul said in verse 14. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Who is he talking to them? He's talking to all Israelites there. He's talking to the southern tribe and the northern tribe because they were split when? When Solomon, when Solomon died. And why was they split? Southern kingdom, northern kingdom. He, he married all them foreign women and brought all them idol gods in. And when his sons took over, God said, because of this, I'm going to split the kingdom. So Israel was split the southern, king, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. So Paul is saying here, he's saying to these Gentiles, he said, y'all was far from this covenant, but now you've been made nigh by the blood of Christ. Then he make a statement, for he's our peace, the Israelites. Yeah. He's our peace. He broke down that split that was between us and made us one again, uh, again in Christ. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Yeah. When you're reading this book, you got to realize what it's saying, because Paul will shift on you. Because he's, he's going in the spirit. So Paul said he's our peace. He's the one that's going to make the, the two sticks going to be made one. But they're made one in Christ. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So he goes on to say, jump down to verse 19. Ephesians 2 verse 19. Watch this. Now therefore, you are no more strangers. Now he's back talking to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Now you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints. The saints, he's talking about the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So he said, y'all are fellow citizens with the saints. And of what? Yeah. The household of God. What was that scripture you read, Tammy? It says, if you try to climb up any other way into the sheepfold, you're a thief and a robber. If you try to get in his household any other way, what he's going to tell you? I never knew you. Israel only have I known. My, you know what he said? My house only I know. So you got to be in his house to be saved. That's what he's talking about. So uh, what verse did I stop on now? Let me just start over. Ephesians 2.19. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And Now watch this. You're in the household of God. Now watch how the house is built. And built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets. The apostles and prophets was Israelites. You in an Israel kingdom. You in an Israel house. And now we living in 2022 going on over into 2023. And all old peoples are hearing is, Hebrew Israelite awakening. What is this about? He putting his house back together. Yes, Because man have had his run of his houses, mm -hmm. church houses, mm -hmm. and people are sick of church. Yes. So he's bringing his house back to the foreknowledge. And if you're not in his house, I don't know nobody but my house. <laughs> Israel only have I known. Glory to God. So now let me keep going. And built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The house of God is an Israel kingdom, an Israel house. All of these people right here, that's the foundation of Israelites. So to hate Israelites, you hate the kingdom. You hate his house. Let's just be real about it. Okay? In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. So the very people everybody laughing at are the very people the foundation is going to be built with. That's the way it usually goes. That's the way it goes. Now, now watch this. Let me give you a scripture. The stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. 
Now, of course, that means Christ, but Christ's family is under him. Mm -hmm. The very stone everybody have rejected, the very people everybody have hated, the very people they don't want to be the people are the people. <laughs> He's using the very stone the world rejected. Peter said, you have become lively stone and are built up a spiritual house. He going to build his house with his stones, the children of Israel. So I think Christendom better get used to this Hebrew Israelite awakening because it ain't going away. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let me go through a few other scriptures. Acts chapter 7. Uh, let me let me do it like this so I can go fast and, and close it out. Never get Acts seven thirty eight. Judy, Matthew sixteen eighteen. Y'all kind of remember the ones I'm giving because I'm beginning to sweat and I want to close it out. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Melba, read your Acts seven thirty eight. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel, mm -hmm. which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Anything that's calling itself church, if it's not the church in the wilderness, it's not his church. Mm -hmm. What was the church in the wilderness? The Israelites. So whenever you talk about church, if it's apart from Israel, it is not of the Father. The church in the wilderness is the only church that he has ever owned, and he don't have another one. That's his household. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you see church all through the New Testament, he's not talking about this stuff out here we see calling itself churches. Mm -hmm. Okay, read yours, Judy. Matthew 16, 18. Mm -hmm. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, mm -hmm. and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the idea of church got so clouded with all of these churches, all of these denominations, but the Father was never talking about none of them. He said, Israel only have I known. So when he said right here, upon this rock I'll build my church, what was he saying? He's going to start, he get ready to start a church, he get ready to do something, uh, that he has never done. No, he was talking about the same peoples in the wilderness. I'm getting ready to build them. That's what he meant right here. Okay, let's go to a few other scriptures before we close. All right, last thing. Yeshua's church started with Israel, and it will end with Israel. And if you are not in the family of Christ, he will tell you, depart from me. I never knew you, because Israel only have I known. I'm closing with this. Now, Acts 1-4, watch this. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me. Who was he talking to them? In Acts chapter 1, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, who was assembled together with them? Christ was assembled with the Israelites. Right here in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Now watch this, Acts 1, verse 6 and 7. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, the kingdom to Israel is going to be restored. That's why you hear so much Israel teaching now. That's why you hear so much about the Hebrew Israelite awakening now. It ain't going to stop. It's going to intensify. Because it's time to build the kingdom. Christ coming back to gather the elect to build the kingdom from the point of the stones, which are Israel first. And everybody else wrapped it in. Okay? So it says... When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own powers, showing it, showing you that he got a time and a place. He's going to use his power to put it in place. And I'm telling everybody, the reason this stuff is so heavy on me 
and so heavy on many others. And the, the reason why you're hearing this so much, it's time for him to build his kingdom. Because he's going to wipe out the memory of church. And I'm glad we established ourselves on no more church as usual. Because he's moving everybody out of that mess into his fold. Look at uh, Acts 1.15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together was about 120. Now, this is the same group of people right up here in Acts 1 verse 4. It said being assembled together with him, with them. Jesus was assembled together, and he, well, he, he met with about 500 of them all at one time. But all of a sudden, he's giving instruction to about 120 people to go wait on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter when the power of God came. Who was that 120? Israelites. What's my last point? The kingdom, or what is called the true church, started with Israel, and it's going to end with Israel. That's why you hear so much Israel preaching now. Because this thing on, it started with Israel, He's going in with Israel. Amen. All 120 was Israelites. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, uh, Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall, shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall... Uh, and, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes, the tribes are the tribes of Israel. And where are they? In the earth. They're not in Middle East in Israel. I mean, they may have some of them living over there, but I'm talking about they ain't over there ruling nothing. Right. They don't have no state of Israel talking about that's God's nation. The Israelites, when Christ come, going to be in the earth, and they're going to be in mourning. We're mourning now. We're getting ready to mourn. I'm going to make this announcement before I close. We're getting ready to mourn this evening at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. There's going to be thousands of Israelites on social media praying today, asking God to uh, save us, Father. Forgive us of our sin. We repent and turn from our wicked way. Thousands of them. I want y'all to tune in. If you're cleaning your house, just let it play. I'm going to make that announcement in a minute. They in the earth morning, calling for the Lord. Help us. They realize who they are and they crying to him. This is what going to bring Christ back. So it says that after the tribulation of those days, that's after the tribulation of Israel. Israel done been through the great tribulation. We still in tribulation, but we done been through the great tribulation. So it said, after the tribulation, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in, in heaven, and then shall the tribes of the earth, he ain't talking about nobody else but the tribes of Israel, tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming, in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And when he come, watch what he going to do. And he shall send his angels uh, with the great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. That's Israel. Why? Because he set the kingdom up with them first. Then he's going to gather everybody else. Many of them going to be on his right. Many of them going to be on his left. He's going to say, what you did to them, you did to me. <laughs> That's the order of business when he come back. Set his kingdom up with Israelites. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then it says, then it says in verse 25, now verse 24 said, after they complete this tribulation sex uh, uh, season they in, they done went through the great tribulation. Oh, we ain't going through nothing greater than what we've been through already. We done been through the greatest of the suffering. Now we still in suffering and still in the lands of our captivity, but we ain't going through nothing like we went through before. The only thing on the horizon is the wrath of God, but that's for the nations. That's for the people who mistreated Israel. That's not for us. So, when he come get them in 24, he set up his kingdom with his elect. Chapter 25 say, and when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So they asked him in Acts chapter 1, 
when are you going to build to give the kingdom back to Israel? He said, you don't know yet. But over here, he's telling them whenever he come back, that's when he's going to set it up. It's right here in Matthew 25. Now, let me close with Matthew 25, verse 40 and 41. I done said this a thousand times, but I need to say it a thousand and one times for somebody that has never heard it. When he set his kingdom up, he's going to tell everybody on his right and his left what you did to them, you did to me. You cannot live in his fold if you hate his people. Any questions or comments? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. The scriptures proves itself. You said that you would tell a bunch of people, I never knew you. Why? Because Israel only have I known. You are building your kingdom. And Lord, the reason we know you're coming soon is because you're waking your people up. And they are scattered everywhere waking up. And Father, we said, come, Lord Jesus. Save us. Deliver us. Help us. And help us to not be weary in well-doing. To teach the scriptures the way the scriptures are written. written. And Father, I pray for those that hear me under the sound of my voice. Bring repentance to the heathens. Bring repentance to the Gentiles that they can see a doom coming. Father, have mercy upon people that want to be saved. We give you praise in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Let me make this announcement, then you can turn it off, Tammy. Tonight at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, there will be hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of black people on the internet praying. Tao Ministry is uh, sponsoring Sister Shonda at Large, Maria Trumpet Call, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Gates of Holder, Stay On Fire Ministry. A bunch of people going to be online tonight praying. What are we praying? Uh, Second Chronicles 714 said, If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, he said, He'll heal from heaven and heal our land. If we believe we are really the people, at some point we got to pray for ourselves as a nation. We will be praying tonight. Please turn your computers on if you can. And like I said, if you're busy, just let it play and listen to the prayers. I'm going to be on there as well. And hundreds of others all around the world are going to be praying tonight. This last day of 2022 going into 2023. Amen. Tune in. You're going to be blessed. Anybody got anything? Tammy, close us out in prayer. <clears throat>